good morning. And Welcome to this morning's devotions. Oh, and good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Pastor good morning. Randy. Pastor Matt, we're Intercession City Church of God, for those that don't know us. <laughs> I thought she was doing it again. I thought she was putting her hand on me and saying, Pastor, Pastor Randy. I'm not Pastor Randy, so there. Well, we are together as one. Amen. Amen. So, God has allowed us to do that since shortly after I got saved, he got saved. and. What's that mean? We've been together ever since. <laughs> God has wanted right. us to do everything together. So. We're set. We're settling in here, uh, in, into our our morning routine. Once we start working again, we're gonna have to find a way to uh, to do this. Do, do this, because I don't think that you know we go to work by six thirty in the morning. I don't think <laughs> most people are up. Uh, in order to do this and get everything done, it, it's we'll figure it out. Yeah, God maybe knows. twice a week. That'll uh, make it so we can go in a little later. Maybe it could be a Saturday morning devotion or a different different morning during the week. But uh, Duke, Duke is sitting right there. Yep. Hey, Duke. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Intercession City Church of God. Good morning, Scylla. So good glad morning. to have you online. Uh, I see you there. <laughs> I, and uh, we just want to welcome you to our live feed. <laughs> That's awful pink. Uh, Randy decided that she would like to continue in the first epistle of John. We haven't opened up a prayer yet. But she's going to start in John chapter 1. So before we do anything, we're going to pray. So go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can gather together around your word. Yes. Lord, the living word that gives us life. Yes, thank you. Father, I ask as we open up our Bibles, Lord, and we, we hear from you. Yes. Prepare our hearts to receive, our ears to hear, O oh Lord. Let us have the mind of Christ Yes. to understand your word. Yes. Oh God. Walk as your children. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There is all scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. righteousness. Amen. All scripture. So today we're going to take a scripture. What we have been doing is we've kind of been looking for verses that have to do with hope because everybody needs hope. We're close. Today is the 21st. Yeah. Um, this month is coming to an end, and pretty soon May 1st will be here and uh, things are going to change on May 1st. So we're looking forward Amen. to uh, finishing up 40 days yes. and, and then moving forward. Uh, There's a possibility that May 3rd may be a day that they allow churches to open. So we'll find May, out. May 3rd find will be the first that. Sunday in May. And uh, there may be, a, maybe, just what I said, back to church day. Yeah. There are some governments, however, that are declaring um, that they will fine and ticket any church gatherings of, of 10 or more. Um, but yet they allow certain other places and establishments to have more than that. If you're going to open up a beach and you're going to have more than 10 people with it, within a 100 square foot area, which is only 10 foot by 10 foot or however, however it's going to be, or 20 foot by 20 foot, Take the square footage and put it together and see how many people you're letting in other places. How many people are at the Walmart register together? It's essential. How many people are at Publix together? It's essential. How many people are sitting in a doctor's office? It's essential. Well, church is essential. Amen. Fellowship is essential. Spiritual well-being is essential. Uh, the state of your mental mentalness <laughs> your mental well-being is essential Amen. and being in isolation is in jail it's a punishment in prisoner of war camps isolation was meant to be a a punishment isolate them from everybody we don't need to continue in isolation when it begins to damage people beyond beyond what the possibilities of possibly getting sick are. I know the possibilities of getting sick are you're gonna catch coronavirus and you're gonna die. 
I understand that. If you have to go out in public, wear your mask. That's what the that's what our government has asked us to do is to cover your face. Why cover it at least for the courtesy of other people? No, you're covering it so you don't get it. No, you're covering it so you don't accidentally spit when you're talking onto the the, the box of cornflakes. And it gives uh, or sneeze else on the back so far, or sneeze or, or or touch your face and then touch the box of cornflakes and then some other person picks up the cornflakes. You don't know. You may not have it. Chances are, most people don't. So, but we still need to be very cautious of uh, of how we're interacting with everybody. We need to exercise that that same caution, but we also don't need to live in fear. We don't need to cower under a rock somewhere because I think everybody's pretty much done cowering under a rock. Well, as a jeeper, it's time for me to get out in my jeep and drive over the rock. You know, if us that are believers, I think of if the world would act toward God the way they're right now acting toward this coronavirus, they're bowing down to it. You know, they're fearing it. They're doing whatever is required that it seems to command of us. What if we just allowed the God of the whole universe to have that same control of our life. Amen. Not fear of, oh, I'm going to die, but instead the reverence to our God, the maker of heaven and earth. How different would our world be? How different would our community be? If everyone reverenced God and did the same sacrifices they're willing to do for this COVID-19, People stopped going to bars, people stopped eating, people stopped doing all these things that normally they would do, all these pleasure things for this. How about doing it for God? Amen. How about living a holy life Amen. for the Lord because He wants to fill you with His joy and His peace and it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. Money cannot buy the peace and the love Amen. and the joy that Amen. you have from the Lord. Amen. And now I guess we better get into our word. Well, before <laughs> she started to, to, to talk about something that's important, I was out in the Jeep. We were with family yesterday. We went out to Three Lakes. And I was thinking, you know, there's a stay at home. Everybody says, stay at home, 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 stay at home. I get it. Uh, but I also hear, have often heard, home is where the heart is. Well, sometimes my heart is out on the trails. <laughs> so I'm going to go home <laughs> and spend some time at home. And it was beautiful yesterday. Yes. God's creation is wonderful. God blessed us with an incredibly beautiful sunset. Yes. I posted up some pictures on the Florida Jeep Rides Facebook page. Gorgeous time with the family. Had a wonderful time. Yeah, I broke something, but that's, that's, that's. But God made it so that we saw it. We saw it. <laughs> because well, we, we stopped to look at the beautiful till, creation. Till <laughs> halfway through we realized that my front steering damper stabilized my front steering stabilizer whatever came off uh so it not not a problem zip ties duct tape it, <laughs> always, it, makes it, it always makes a way to fix things <laughs> but you know what sometimes the uh our life Church. has things that break in it yeah. and when things that break in it uh it can hinder our progress but this, what we're about to read today, is more than a zip tie. Amen. It is more than duct tape. It is more than the force binding everything together. It is the word of God, Amen. and it will not return void. Amen. That means Amen. that that portion of scripture that says that, says that it's gonna accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. God said it's gonna do. The Word of God will never fail. So take what we say today and apply it to your life. How do I do that? It's pretty simple. As I read and, and Randy shares, when you are watching, take a couple of notes mm -hmm. of something that you need to pray about. And then afterwards, put on a worship song or whatever, or find a place, or, or, or the bathroom, wherever, it doesn't matter, someplace, and pray and say, God, help me to apply that to my life yes. Yes. pretty simple and and because you can't do it on your own we have the Holy Spirit it's our helper so yes. we're gonna rely on that let's start with verse number one 
we again are in First John, the uh, uh, first epistle of John, who was a eyewitness, uh, hands-on person, one of the twelve who walked with Jesus. He was with Jesus. He fellowshiped with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He was with Jesus. He was there. He walked with him. He knew him. John writes this, that that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show it unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. You stop me whenever you want to stop. Amen. I mean, here he is, the word of life. You know, God breathed life into man. <laughs> Not coronavirus. No. <laughs> he breathed life. The word of life. Jesus is the word of God. And here, John, and it's son of Zebedee is who they, they believe this is, John the son of Zebedee. The same John that Jesus said at the cross, you take care of my mother. That, that same John, I mean, he really knew. He was the John that when Peter went to the grave to see the, t the tomb. John ran on ahead. John ran on ahead. This was that John. He was younger. It, by he the was way. younger. He's the one that they believe was leaning against Jesus at the supper. The beloved John. John the beloved is whom he was so called. He is speaking from emotion, from heart. He knows. He knows what he saw. There was no doubt for him. And he says, For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And that word manifested is revealed openly. You know, the word was revealed openly to them. We have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. And you add whatever else you want to add to this stuff. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye may also have fellowship that ye may also have fellowship with us. Ah. <laughs> and truly... Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We got fellowship with the Father and His Son and each other. And I love verse 4. It says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Hey. That joy. You know, again... We don't have to depend on the priest to go into the Holy of Holies. None of that stuff. We don't have to wait for a sacrifice to be done. It's already done. We already have everything taken care of that we yeah. need to have that open fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. You want you joyful? Who, who doesn't want to be full of joy? No, I want to be full of sadness. <laughs> no, no, I want to be full of anger. Uh, no, I want to be um, full of, uh, what's that word? Uh, <laughs> confusion? <laughs> confusion? No, yeah, no, no, I would want to be joy. full of joy. You want to be full of joy. You don't have joy in your life. Amen. Then read the word. Plain and simple. And verse number five. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him with God but we walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. What an awesome thing. Amen. What an awesome thing. And you know what? And it's a continuous thing. Because 
we all make mistakes. We all sometimes get, get a thought that's not a proper thought. At that moment, you just stop in your spirit. You don't have to say it mm-hmm. out loud if you're around people. Think, like, thinking Lord, about it's not the me. same as walking in it. No, exactly. You can, it, you can be tempted. Jesus was tempted. Mm-hmm. Temp- being tempted is not a sin. Huh. Otherwise, <laughs> Jesus would have sinned <laughs> because he was tempted. You can think about going out and, and, and drowning your sorrows in drunkenness. But that's not a sin. The, you catch the, that thought The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but filled with the Spirit. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot to say about that. And, and, and there are a lot of uh, foggy areas in, in that. But I propose to you that whatever you look to in your time of need is becoming your God. Yeah. So if drowning your sorrows in drunkenness, then, then alcohol becomes your God. If, if getting stoned uh, is how you alleviate everything it is, then you are looking to that to become your God. Now there is a difference between using stuff medicinally because alcohol does have a place within medicine and and even some natural drugs have their place within medication but if you are using it for medication that is different than using it as an escape there's a difference if you're relying on something it, it as an escape to bring you to a alternate state of mind an alternate place then perhaps that that thing has become your God in life. For some people it's drugs, for some people it's alcohol, for some people it's sex, for some people it is adventure, uh, for some people it, it's, it's violence. Some people are not happy till they're bashing on other people. I mean, internet trolls, they find no happiness unless they can say the, the worst possible thing that they should never say in public. And here's another end, okay? There's those that being popular, those that, oh, having the latest word of knowledge, not in Christ, but like the, oh, what do you call it? The think, uh, the, the I got thing. some new hidden truth that you've never heard before. Yeah, for your business, for this, or for that. You know, always chasing after something like that will pull you away from the Lord. If you find yourself going for whatever, oh, this is how to be successful, and it's pulling you more, and you're getting more into that than you are the Word of God, then no. That's a device that the enemy is using to pull you into man's ways rather than God's ways. This has to be the priority. It's just like if you try to live your life, all, let's say that you're dieting and you're doing the Nutra bars or whatever, you know, you can't do that for a lifetime and be healthy. Mm-mm. You have to have good balanced meals. The Word of God good balanced is meal. the only true balanced meal for your soul, for your life. It has the milk of the word there's the meat of the word it has everything you need because the creator who created you made it so who knows you better than the one that made you amen now that we've had our cookies and we ate our dessert first this balanced <laughs> meal is about to deliver the meat yes. so get your knife out and get your <laughs> fork out and get your steak sauce because it's about to get just a little bit more heavy you're going to have to chew on this a little bit because like a good steak, you don't just cut it, <laughs> put it in your mouth and swallow it. This is not applesauce anymore. This is not baby food. This goes on in verse number eight after it talks about the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. Verse eight says something very profound and very important in our Christianity. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins it says that he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the last verse says if we say that we have not sinned 
we make him a liar and his word is not in us if his word is not in you you will have no joy if you say I don't have sin then the truth is not in you you're you are a liar and you try to make God out to be a liar because God said all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God that is that is in the word now either all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God except for you so either the word is right or you're right we can't continue to walk in sin if you're doing something in your life that you know is counterproductive to the word then I challenge you right now to bow your head and pray along yes. with us because there is going to be a moment in your life right now where God is going to reach in and he's going to do some surgery and take stuff out of your life so let's bow our heads and pray if that's yes. okay yeah. Heavenly Father Lord I thank you for your word oh, yes. I thank you God in the name of Jesus that you would show us Lord how to live for you Father, this, this thing where people say, I don't have any sin, or that they say, that's not sin. Um, the Bible doesn't say that. Father, I pray right now that, that each person who's listening to me would take a moment and pray along with me. Yes. Heavenly Father, yes, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the blood that Jesus shed for the blood that Jesus I shed. thank you for what Jesus did I thank you for what Jesus did show me sin show me sin in my heart in my heart if I have if I have seared my conscience seared my conscience and sealed up a part of my heart and sealed up a part of my and heart and said don't go in there and said don't go in there I give you permission now I give you permission to now unsear it to unsear to it to open it up to open it up and to challenge me once more and to challenge me once more that Lord I might live Lord, that I might victoriously. Live victoriously. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your love. For your love and your compassion. And your compassion. Change my heart. Change my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God can come into your life and make a life-altering moment this morning in which you can go from the same old, same old, to back to April 21st, 2020, Amen. was one of the best years ever. Because on that morning, I asked Jesus to take something out of my heart, and God did it. That's Amen. what the word says. If Amen. we are praying last yesterday, if we are praying in his will, and we know it's in his will, we can he have will. this confidence that he not only hears our prayers, but he will grant us this partition. It is not God's will for you to have sin in your heart. Amen. It is God's will that your heart be pure. Yes. So when you pray, you can know that God will deal with your heart. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Know that success is not Amen. the success the world says it is. Amen. Success is having the right relationship with God, having peace and joy deep within. That's why we hear of so many wealthy people and famous people committing suicide. On the outside, people think they have it all made, they put the smiles, everything seems good. They have anything they want except for the peace and joy deep inside. And that's what God gives us, something that the world can not. My peace I leave unto you, and it's not a peace like the world has. It's His peace. Hey, hit that little thumb thing like this right here. <laughs> see that little, see that little thing popping up in that little heart thing. Go ahead and hit that if you're there. Thank you. I see, I see your heart. Anybody? Oh wait, I, I see that too. Thank you very much. We see that. Blessings, Wonderful. Thank Karen. you, Karen. I've been wondering about you. I've had you and Junior on my heart. Blessings Amen. to you. Good to see you there. Thank you. I've got to get up and turn the camera off. Thank you for joining Many us. Many blessings to you Many blessings. Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Amen.